Hello everybody, welcome to the Wednesday Night Bible Study. Uh, let's open up in some prayer and then dig into the Word. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity we have to delve into your scriptures and contemplate the things that you have in store for us. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just be with us, speak uh, to us through your Word, and help us to grow closer to you. In your name I pray. Amen. So we're doing things a little bit differently tonight. I uh, thought it would be kind of nice to mix things up. So we're actually going to talk about a book of the Bible. Uh, it's a real small one, uh, so I encourage you to read the whole thing. Uh, it is Philemon. I think it's 28 verses, something like that. It's it's pretty short. Um, and it's I think it's a really cool book. Um, and so I pulled three different little chunks out of it uh, that I wanted to get into. And instead of uh, reflection questions per se, uh, it's just more points that I really see in the book uh, to take note of uh, and to think about applying in your own life. So let's get into the word, uh, starting in verse four. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. Before he gets into uh, the heart of what he's trying to talk to Philemon about, he opens up by saying, I'm thankful for all of the things that you and the church that you're involved with are doing. And I think that that's really important. I feel like oftentimes when we ask for something or we're trying to confront someone about a problem, we can focus on the issue at hand and not make them feel important. I know that one of those uh, kind of church phrases is uh, love the sinner, hate the sin. Uh, but oftentimes we don't really do a good job at discerning between those two things. We need to make sure that we're confronting people about issues with love and val uh, validating them as a person, helping them to know that they're loved, that they're valued, and that we appreciate them for who they are. Uh, next thing is verses 8 through 10. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. I then, as Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Here we see that Paul isn't making a demand. He isn't pulling that classic parent move of uh, telling you to do something, and then when you ask them, they say, because I said so. Paul isn't making this a power play. Paul is saying, I could just boss you around. I have that authority. I am the Apostle Paul. But instead, I'm going to ask you nicely because I love you, because I see some problems here, but because I know you. I trust you, and I'm just going to ask you to do this, to do what's right. And I think that that's a powerful thing to recognize that we can, we can do that. We can open up to people, we can point out these things, and we can say, hey, I love you. Uh, and I want to encourage you to make this change because it's what's right. And I think that that's something that we can really take note of um, for our own selves. And the last point that I've got for you guys tonight is verses 18 and 19. If he, has done any, if he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back. Not to mention that you owe me your very self. Here Paul is saying, look, I understand that it's hard to move forward sometimes. I understand that there might be um, some... Uh, some, some tension that needs resolved. I recognize there might be some problems, some debts that might need paid. I recognize that there is a need for forgiveness. So if there's any way that I can help, that I can step in, uh, that I can cover for this person, I, I want there to be grace. And nevertheless, um, you know me. I, in some ways, am owed your very life. I'm assuming Paul here is speaking in a spiritual sense, that he brought the gospel to these people, and that they owe them, to a certain extent, um, the knowledge of Christ. Uh, 
and therefore if you wanted to extrapolate it uh, their salvation again it's not that Paul saved them um, obviously that is something that can only be done through the Holy Spirit but Paul brought them that knowledge and Paul saying you owe me your very life I'm not gonna hold that over your head but remember who I am recognize why I'm asking this of you I'm not gonna get into the details because I want you guys to read the scripture for yourselves uh, It's the book of Philemon you can read it in five minutes um, and it's a really powerful book about forgiveness about reconciliation and about what the body of Christ is supposed to look like uh, so I highly encourage you to delve into that uh, and to think about how this can affect our own relationships within the church recognizing needs for forgiveness recognizing um, how we can step up and support one another even in conflicts so I hope you guys have a blessed week I hope that this Bible study um, was something a little bit different than our regular run-of-the-mill Wednesday night Bible studies. Uh, and I hope you liked it. Uh, have a blessed day, and let's enjoy some worship. Thank you.